Welcome to the Black Lion Podcast. We are your hosts, Lex and Dom, and today we have a special guest. Can you please introduce yourself, please? My name is Fadina. I am 48, and I'm currently living in Bel Air, Maryland. Um, so can you tell the audience what exactly you do, like work-wise? Well, I was working in a warehouse, um, operating a forklift. And because of the corona crap, uh, we got laid off, but I was wrongfully terminated. So right now I'm just not working, but only time I work is when a model agency called me for assignments and that's it. And what made you want to get into modeling? Um, I was stopped when I was crossing the street and someone gave me a business card and I didn't call for a while because I didn't want to be bothered with, but, um, I just gave her a call, see what it's all about. And two days I did my first model assignment. So, yeah, I just been busy since then. That's good. Do you like? Do you have any fear doing it or no? Do I have a feel on it? Fear, fear. fear? Oh, oh. Well, no. I just uh, don't want to be too friendly when I meet people. Just a high and a bye, but no fear. I know some people they skeptical about doing modeling jobs and things of that sort. Well, the agency will run you by the assignment is really up to the individual if they want to take it or not, the location, how much you pay, who's going to be there. So once you get the information you get, then you could decide if you want to do it or not. That's a, well, that's a, that's the best way to do it. Yeah. Yep. So, from your perspective, what conclusions did you come to about why people are insecure about relationships? Well, uh, when I first came here in the state of Maryland, uh, that was 2019, um, I really enjoyed myself just being single, raising my 15-year-old son. And I came across a guy that approached me. And that was in December of 2020. And I'm really not looking to get married. I'm not looking for no relationship. I just want to stay focused on uh, raising my son and uh, have fun modeling. But um, I just gave him a chance and see what it was going to lead to. But um, I noticed that his behavior has been changing over the months uh, when it comes to me modeling. Um, I don't know, I just think it's weird that sometimes when individuals are infatuated with a certain celebrity, you might have a picture of that person on your phone or maybe on your wall. I realized that when that individual starts telling you or asking you, can you delete these pictures or can you take the pictures down off your wall or can you take off the ringtone off your phone? That sounds to me controlling and if there's a certain area in Maryland state that I don't want to go to because I don't like how it looked, then I noticed that that individual would get upset. So yeah, four times we had a disagreement. Four times I call it quits. And I got to the point, I gather all that information up and I realized it's not going to work. So I can't say he's not marriage material. I know I'm not because I'm not looking to get married, but when you whip someone, it should be more confidence, not more insecurity. And then you got a question about someone's assignment or job. I don't think that's appropriate. I mean, I don't understand why you just can't go with the flow. So when once the guy mentioned that he is insecure sometimes, then I said to myself, that's it's not going to work. So if you had that issue before, then you should have never approached me. So. Every day is a learning experience. Education never stops. 
So I realized that I don't want to go through that again with this individual because that's why I left Florida because of that issue. And I realized I'm facing it again if, in, in Maryland State. I don't want to do it again. Where do you see yourself at? Well, what are your goals for this year of 2021? Um, I hope to be in Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Magazine. I want to be educated when it comes to this fashion and entertainment industry. And I want to learn how to, you know, you got to get your bottles patent. You got to find out where the fragrance come from. So I would like to come out with a perfume. So I would like to get my fashion ideas off of paper and into stores, but I have to be educated before I do all of that. So it, it's not easy. So I, I need to be educated before I start investing money on anything. That knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. so, what, so when you do get everything up and running, whenever that happens, where do you see that business, your business going at in that those five years, the next five years, I meant to say? Um, I would like it to happen in uh, Monaco, not so much in America, because I don't want to be stalked or uh, paparazzi. So if I can just branch out in Europe and I'm over here, then it won't be so much, you know, chaos. So yeah, I'd rather start over there, Paris or Monaco. Yeah. Do you network a lot? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Can you repeat that? Do you network? Oh, um, I don't know how that social media works, like Facebook or Instagram. So uh, my modeling agency handles all of that. So you have like your own manager and things of that sort? Yeah, they'll handle all of that. I don't know how that works. I know if you're going to be your own business, you're going to have to learn how to network, like yeah. reach out to people. Yeah. Yep. When you get a chance, they'll teach me all of that. Your son, is you um, teaching him about wanting, well, trying to steer him in the right direction to be, uh, to work for himself? Well, um, Jacob is 15, so when he start doing his modeling assignment, I will have to teach him how to put his money aside, like the bank, um, be careful of the heavy spending, and um, don't be so quick to tell your friends what you're doing, because we don't want nobody to feel some type of way or take advantage of Jacob, and as I learn, I teach him, and we learn together as the agency teach us, you know, what to expect when we go for auditions, so... We take classes, and uh, we take it from there. That's good. Mm -hmm. You say you're 15? Jacob is 15, yes. That's good. Well, there's a lot of models out here. And you say you live in Maryland, correct? Yes. Yeah, I'm trying to make my way to go back to Florida. How how is life in well? I know I see people on social media in Florida, but how is life in Florida like from your point of view? Well, Florida to me, since I've been there for ten wonderful years, um, is more relaxed and calm, and um, and it's always not so much always hot because you do have central air, but um, Florida is just a warm climate weather, so. It's not the fact that they don't care about Corona. It's just that when you are privileged to think you could do what you want, you can't tell someone they can't do it. So that's like one privilege turned into another privilege. It's not going to work. It's going to collide. So I have to learn not to walk outside with my two piece on when it's nice and you know sunny out because it's not Florida. It's not expected to see. But in Florida, you're used to seeing that. And I have to remind myself to put on my mask because sometimes in Florida, you just don't do it because you just don't. 
So I have to remind myself to mask up. I wish people would mask up their prejudice and hate because it spreads. And I noticed that how the world's taking this mask thing seriously and a corona, but no one took police brutality serious at all or American prejudice or racism or the powerless supremacy. So it's amazing what corona could do. It brings out the ugly in everyone. So that's sad, it really is. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, so, yep, corona's not good. <laughs> How did you feel about that election? Oh, I don't get into uh, politics. I don't vote. I don't have an opinion on none of it because it, I just don't get involved. I don't want to. Yeah, that and religion. I don't touch neither one of those. <laughs> yeah. One day you might touch on it. Right circumstance. Um, I stand with gays and lesbians. That's all I care about right now. Why is that? Um, because everybody has a right to fall in love with whoever they want to fall in love with. So it's love, it's not hate. So, yeah. Well, that's one way to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> So you lived in Florida for 10 years. How long have you been in Maryland for? Uh, I would say two years. It was it went by so fast. I came here in April 2019. So it came by real fast. I mean, I was just getting the hang of it in 2020, but then that's when that corona came in. So I really couldn't enjoy much, you know, lockdown and the mask. And yeah, people acting crazy. As a living space is Florida more spacious or is Maryland more spacious? Meaning like uh, room to breathe. Well, um, Maryland state is very expensive. It should be. But when it comes to Florida, I like it because there's more different people there. People speak Spanish, French, Creole. Um, I like seeing different people and their cultures. So yeah, and the Caucasian people in Florida, especially in Naples, they are so friendly. They will speak when they see you walking down the street, they'll smile and say hi. Uh, sometimes you don't get that much um, communication with Caucasian in the North, but in the South, yes. Yeah, it's so tropical. Just remind yourself not to stand underneath the palm trees because you don't want to get hit with the coconuts. So yeah, I like it. It's like a tropical island, but it's not. It's Florida. Well, a lot, a lot's been going on. So yeah, I can't wait to go back. I hope it's meant for me to go back, but I don't know. I would like to go back. Did you own your house, or you was like renting? I was renting a condo. But when I go back, it will be my first home. So, yep, yep, I'm going back. What part of Florida? Boca Raton. I love Boca. Yeah. I've been there before for six months. I love it. Are the houses expensive or are they uh, it's, very, it's very expensive in Boca Raton. Uh, majority of the people are Jewish. There's a lot of synagogues there, very friendly. Um, I just chose that area because that's where I fell in love with. I've been in um, Boynton Beach, West Palm Beach, Pompano Beach, uh, Coconut Creek, but I like Palm Beach County. So Boca Raton is where I would like to live at. Yeah. How, how does your son feel about it? Like moving from Florida to... Um... I, at first he didn't like it, but he misses his friends. So when we get a chance, we go back to Florida and visit. So that's in the area of Orlando. So y'all, they communicate back and forth. So I told him, I said, when we come into some money, we'll go back to Boca Raton. He just came up here with me, warehouse jobs. 
he got a chance to see and feel and taste the snow. So when he realized how cold it was, he's like, nope, 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 I want to go back. I said, yeah, well, it's a good experience, but just, you know, be careful. You can't eat everything off the ground because there's a snow. You just have to be careful. It's not always clean. And the yellow snow is not lemonade. So don't do that either. Yep. So as soon as we come into some money, we out of here. I understand. Yep. <laughs> so when you was growing like growing up I know you're much older than me but not much older but old enough mm-hmm. you was like a cheerleader or played sports or anything oh uh, when I was growing up my mother was very religious so I couldn't do much she sheltered me and from my family. So we didn't do much. I didn't know much. So at the age of 18, when she died of breast cancer, when she was 38, um, I was devastated. So all I knew was church, Jesus, if you don't do this, you go to hell, blah, blah, blah. So I can relate to Stephen King's Carrie. So that's why I like that movie because I can relate, but I just wish I had telekinesis, but I don't. But um, yeah, I can relate to the movie because I was just like her. Well, that's well, part of that just not true. But <laughs> there's the only hell we go through now is the hell on earth. People killing well, yeah, I that religious stuff. I don't touch it. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I just left a a religious cult like in June, and. I don't want to touch no more religion ever again. I'm done. I'm all faith out. I believe in love, but I don't want to touch no kind of religion whatsoever. You said a religious cult? Yeah, I just left a religious cult in June. Uh, I didn't know that I don't, I, you just see a religious cult on TV or something. Not on. In real life, hear about it. Yeah, no more religion for me. I just don't want to touch it. it could be a scary thing. Yeah, it could suck a lot out of you. So, well, I know you say you told your son not to tell his friends everything that was going on with him. Do you, like, talk to your friends about your modeling thing, like your modeling career? Um, sometimes. My son was there the last photo shoot. Um, he just learned it, so when it's time for him to do his shoot, he know what to expect. But um, he really wants to be a, a YouTuber. So I said, well, no problem. In the meanwhile, you should get some more experience under your belt, like take some acting where you can draw your audience and get subscribers. You know, you have to make a, a have a logo, some kind of thing that they know is you if you say a certain word. So yeah, he said he's gonna try it out, acting and a little bit of modeling. And he'll let me know when he wants to quit. I understand that part. Now I'm talking about your friends. I said, do you tell your friends about your modeling career? Oh, my friends. Oh, my girlfriends know about it. So oh. they'll send me some pictures of them. And then I just forward it to my agency. Then they take it from there. Yeah. A couple of my girlfriends, some of them are not American and some are. So, yeah. I have a girlfriend now that's into acting. So I said, well, I'll submit your pictures. Give it to me or you can give it to the agency. And then just take it from there. Do you have like sis, like sisters or siblings? Yes, I have a, a sister that's I, I'm eleven months older than her, and then I have a baby sister, and then I have a brother. Mm-hmm. On your dad's side or your mother's side? Uh, my father had a son, and I just call him my brother. I don't like to say half, so he's my brother, same father but different mothers. Yeah. 
That's deep. Yep. Do they support you in your own career and stuff? I don't ask for their support. I may tell them what I did, but other than that, I don't ask for support. I just go ahead and do it. I know sometimes family support be the best thing that happened to you. Keep yeah, you but I no. no, I don't want them to always know what I'm doing. Then they want their hand out. So that's why I said I don't get every, I don't get my family members involved. I just go ahead and just do it. Do you meditate? No. So, so I, I, I'm, I'm just guessing. So, when you know you make plans, like you gotta, if you gotta plan to do something, you make sure you plan it. Then you just go ahead and do it, and like you put it into action, basically. Oh, I may map it out, and I may sometimes discuss it with um, Sean and ask him his opinion. But other than that, I just have a calendar. If I write something down, and I see it through. But um, oh, yeah, like uh, I want to plan on going to Atlanta, Georgia. I want to check out this particular restaurant, uh, upscale restaurant called West End Eats. And the chef is, uh, I believe, African-American. Well, man of color, because we can't always stay African-American. He might be Haiti. He might be Jamaican. So I want to give him my support. And I want to go down there and, um, you know, check out his food. So me and my girlfriend and my son will go check it out. Go down to Atlanta, Georgia. Never been there before. But while we're there, we're just going to hit every casting directors and just drop our resume off and our headshots. See where it goes. That's good. I'm, do you I'm, drive? I'm sorry. Huh? I said, do you drive? That's what I was asking. Oh no no no! Um, I will play them. I was planning on flying. I'm not driving to state to state. That's that's one thing I won't do. It could be a nice drive sometime. Well, I tried it already with North Carolina. I'm not doing it again. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. We used to go down there to my aunt, well, me and my aunt to go visit my aunt, and her um, her in laws. They used to have a family reunion every summer. What part? Um, Elizabeth City. Oh, okay. All right. That's good. So, what's your diet like? Um, I have to be careful what I eat because it's the same. Once you hit menopause, you will just blow up. So, I eat when I can. And to burn it off, I may walk around the neighborhood, be on the phone talking. But other than that, I have no diet at all. I love fried chicken. And my weakness is uh, cheesecake. As long as it's done right, the pie crust, not the cake cake. And that's it. I like ice cream and junk food. So I don't make a habit of eating it because after 40, I think it's 35, you have to be careful what you eat. And when you do eat, don't lay down. Wait for like 20 or 30 minutes and then walk around. And then if you sleep, you go to bed. Other than that, I have to be careful what I eat and drink. Yep. That makes sense. I know everybody trying to do a plant-based or alkaline diet. No. I don't try to do that at all. More so just because they getting woke up to why we dying from obesity and other diseases that comes with overeating. Well, eating bad food more so than overeating. Well, you got other countries uh, voice their opinion because they have no idea what was it like to be an American over here. And someone once said that we are overprivileged. <laughs> so I'm all like, wow, that is so true. Overprivileged. Mm -hmm. 
like, wow, the fast foods here and the shopping. I mean, we just spoiled. Sometimes we could be arrogant and cocky, some, but um, I learn a lot from my foreign girlfriends. I have to be careful what I say and what I do. I learn a lot from them. I see it in their eyes. So they are right about Americans, but it's not my fault. My ancestors was kidnapped. And the other half of my ancestors was already here, the Native Americans. Mm-hmm. They both worlds. I don't brag about being American. I just try not to say much because we are targets now because of the American government. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately. Love is supposed to be the motivator for everything. Yeah. What advice would you give to a person who wanted to start a business? Oh, um, I can't give them any advices because I'm learning myself. Just be careful. Also, like I say, just be careful around your surroundings. So, yeah, do more research before you start. Yeah. God, I, I, some people give the answer go for it, don't matter what nobody say, that's what you want to do, you can do it because you like the people that talk you out of doing something that you passionate about doing well all I can say is educate yourself first mm-hmm. so, that's, so that's the must right there because anybody can say go for it but you don't want to even if you fail or you think you fail it's just a learning process, it's for you to get right back up don't just sit there. Get up. Try it again. We're going to fail more times than we succeed. Yeah. And people of color should know better. It makes us stronger. Well, I guess we've been succeeding all these years then. <laughs> I realized yesterday um, the reason why prejudice and racism hates people of color why police brutality hates people of color. It's like through the years, we our ancestors, and we go through a lot still, they are mad because we're not leaving. And their fear of us taking over. We won't do the same as what their ancestors did to us. It's just a fear. Because there's only 20% of Caucasian race on the planet Earth. 80% are not. Caucasian at all. But when it comes to America, that's their fear. They angry because we're not going back to Africa. How dare you tell me to go back to Africa when you don't belong here? What part of Africa? They don't care. They just want us to go because they're afraid. So they no longer have control. And that's why I say powerless supremacy because they have no power. All they have is fear and that's just another sign of weakness. It's sad. It really you, said, you said we have more power or they have more power? They have no power at all. Oh. No nope. I know they, they give the illusion that they have power. Well, they like to believe that, but they know it's not true. So that's why the government won't investigate them, you know, the police brutality. They won't even bother that. Of course they won't. Well, I thank you for coming to have the interview. You're always smiling. I like that. <laughs> and nothing wrong with this. See, that's what I'm talking about. I just love a strong brother. Doesn't matter his age. Respectful. But I just don't understand for a brother to, to a female support one another. What is this jealousy thing going on? I just It's just weird. So since I can't figure it out, I don't want to put myself in a situation to figure it out. I'd rather be alone. But thank you for having me, though. It was my pleasure. Okay, then.